Jacob, and we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty one Ford Raptor without launch control, brake boost. That's pretty sick. Horsepower and torque. 450 horsepower, 510 pound feet of torque from a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6. Is that why I went Yeah, that new exhaust that we have from this V6, I think it does sound a lot better than the previous generation, like a noticeable difference. And this still is a V6. We don't have a supercharged V8 yet, but that's probably coming with the Raptor R to compete with the T-Rex. It has to. Apparently it's gonna have the Shelby GT500 engine detuned or something like that. So we'll see, I'm excited for it. And then this competes with the Tundra TRD Pro or not really? Sort of, it kind of competes with the Tremor, which we've never driven, which is why we always reference the Raptor. And then the T-Rex. Yes. And then also the Mojave Jeep kind of. Bare, kind of, barely. Baja, Baja modes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of directly a comparison, just less expensive. And we also did compare this to a 2010 Ford Raptor, so watch that video, but we did not send it through Cliche Corner, so we are going to send it right now, and I'm in sport mode. Yep, all over the place, but the shocks definitely siphon things up because we do have the live valve shocks, and all you can hear is that exhaust out back. Holy crap. Yep, Baja mode is fantastic for suspension and exhaust. Like, <laughs> how excited are you about that exhaust right now? I have a Nissan 350Z. I like that sound of exhaust. And we got the little window in the back open. Here, fe feather it in and out like once and like it's at a uh, 5,000. Yeah, okay, okay. Downshift, downshift, and some feathering. <laughs> it's exactly a Nissan VQ engine from the 350Z. <laughs> and here's a quick shot of it from the outside. And here's a quick shot of Yuri's VQ from the outside. And the reason that the exhaust sounds the way it does is that it actually has a trombone loop. Okay, before you explain that, if you're looking for your own Ford F-150, click the True Car link in the top right corner. So the trombone loop actually looks really crazy. It equalizes the exhaust length to give it a better tone, and it definitely does do that. Yeah, it sounds much better than the previous gen, even though we didn't drive the updated previous gen. Yes, with the live valve shocks. So this one does have the live valve shocks, and this one being a third gen also has multi-link rear suspension in the back, and it makes a huge difference. Like, this drives incredibly well. It's so composed on the road. It feels kind of like that Tundra, but even better, just because we have the adaptive suspension. And we have a whole bunch of drive modes. What do we have in this? Oh boy, do we have some drive modes, Yuri? We got slippery, tow haul, sport, normal, deep snow, Baja, and rock crawl. And since this is one of the new F-150s, we've got all the cool animations that scroll through in the digital gauge cluster that you just saw. And then you can also customize those modes further with your steering wheel buttons, which I absolutely love. It's kind of like a BMW. Kind of, except you don't have the, you know, M, M No, no, buttons. but I mean, you know how they had the center command thing had the three buttons for like exhaust, oh, suspension, steering? You're right. It's like that, but on the wheel. Yeah, no, this, this is great. And that exhaust mode is wide open right now in Baja mode, and it says for off-road use only, but like, I mean, if it's illegal to have a valved exhaust in Canada, oh boy. It, but then this has a built-in valved exhaust, like kind yeah. of whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's but, whatever. But what's the coolest thing is that if you put it in sport mode, when you shut off your car and you get back into it, it prompts you to go into sport mode by pressing OK, which is cool. That's like the whole thing. It doesn't start back up in sport mode, but you can do that with the click of a button. And this has a 10-speed auto, and it does shift pretty quick. I did notice it kind of like chugging along at lower speeds where you're on the brakes, you're coming to a stop, and then it kind of does like a little bit of a clunk. But other than that, it's pretty smooth. Yeah, and just keep it in automatic. It's not like that fun or exciting to shift in manual. But I guess if you're doing Baja stuff and you really need to have your correct gear, we got really awesome tall paddles like we did in the last gen, but these ones are a flat surface instead of having grooves. Yeah, and they're I think they're magnesium or something. Like they're the paddles sound and feel really, really nice. And we also have a particular package on this, the 37-inch performance package for 10,000 Canadian dollars, which is why we have the 37-inch tires, which are the biggest fitted to a truck from the factory, a light-duty truck. Yeah, and these wheels actually look pretty awesome, but I still like first gen wheels more. Yeah, these, these wheels are okay. They are forged, so they are lightweight and they are beadlock capable as well. And if you do get the 37-inch package, you also 
also get actually a different frame in the back because they have to fit that 37 inch spare underneath. So if you're going to get the 37 inch package, you gotta to commit to the 37s. You can't get the 35 and then put the 37 on because you might run into ground clearance and like actually just being able to fit your tires. And then on top of that, there's actually a difference in terms of the approach and departure angles. If you get the 37 inch package, you do get more clearance because yes, you're taller off the ground, but you actually lose some suspension travel for jumps. So if you get the 37 package, then you can probably go to 35s and put the 35 in the spare tire compartment. Correct. And, and how much was that package again? $10,000. Canadian. But, yes, but you also do get slightly retuned dampers and stuff like that because it just changes the whole car and you also get a different axle ratio in the back. So you pretty much just need a full commit to your tire size when you buy them. Exactly. Or buy whatever's on the dealer lot because it's hard to buy new cars right now. Yeah, and a lot of people actually put 37s on the first and second gen. Yes, you can do it. You could probably do it with the 35s on this one as well, but it's just one of those things that you probably shouldn't that isn't ideal. And what would be the Continental recommended tire for a new Ford Raptor? The Terrain Contact AT. And just like in the second gen and even the later half of the first gen, you can actually get a Torsen front differential. So this truck actually has that option as well. Nice, so this is probably pretty capable. Yeah, so it, that would actually help you mostly in like rock crawling and like slower stuff, which I'm kind of disappointed that we don't have anywhere to Baja because we also have this graphics package on here showing me cool terrains that aren't in Ontario. Yeah, kind of unfortunate up here, but Ontario is just flat and straight roads. Yeah, do you wanna talk about these graphics? Okay, so the graphics, it's kind of a different take on the Raptor Splash. Don't really like it because it's not that loud, but I think the first one was so loud that they really couldn't just match that. Oh, I bet you the Raptor R is going to have the good graphics. They're saving it. True, good call. Yeah, it's gonna have the good engine, good graphics, but it's gonna be really expensive because this one's actually quite pricey. Bro, this is all old cars are so expensive. It's like only for rich people nowadays. Yeah, pretty much. All right, I'm gonna floor it and then let's get you into the seat of this Nissan BQ 350Z. <laughs> Just gonna floor it and paddles. Okay. Hey, no auto upshift. Damn, that's pretty good for a truck. Every truck always automatically upshifts, basically. Definitely very good power, but not super exciting like a T-Rex would be. Yes, <laughs> but Raptor R. Okay, now moving on to the interior, we've got the updated Ford F-150 stuff. That's pretty much the same as all the other ones. We have the Pro Power onboard assist. We've got a whole bunch of AC plugs. We've got the zone lighting all around. We've got the nice sideways infotainment screen. My only complaint with the infotainment screen is in the fuel economy thing, it's not a Raptor. Yeah, that's kind of funny because everywhere else in this truck, the graphics wise are real Raptors. Yeah, the gauge is a Raptor. When you start up, it's also a Raptor. Your 360 camera is a Raptor. How much did I pay for this stupid truck to have a regular F-150 in my display screen? About $1.1100,000. <laughs> Weird way to phrase that. Yeah, very. I know. I know. And then color wise, we've got blue everywhere. And then we also have a whole bunch of really cool materials like the stuff on the dash on the doors. Yeah, so it is like soft touch actually. And we got carbon fiber. Yeah, which is a different pattern than we're used to. Carbon fiber, cars on fiber. Then we got a whole bunch of red stripes. We've got red on the side, red on the steering wheel. Orange, that is orange, Yuri. Yeah, that is orange. Is the side stuff orange too or red? I think it's actually red. Anyways, it looks cool. We got Raptor on the armrest and then we got one of those gimmicky armrests that'll fold all the way down when you move your shifter all the way down. We got a wireless charger. We got cup holders that totally fit a Tim Hortons cup. And what about the visors? Three, two, one. Full pass. Okay, Damn. and back to that wireless charger, we also have a phone slot so we could hold it vertically and not have it wireless charge and heat up, which is really nice to have. And then we've got the option for wired or wireless Apple CarPlay and works really well. We've got all these buttons at the bottom so we can actually get everything without digging through menus to go back. Yeah, so even though they are not hard buttons, they're actually very functional. And then we've got some hard buttons at the top. We've got our 360 camera button here, which is great because this truck is huge and I want to see in front of me very quickly if I need to leave a parking lot or something where I don't know if a little kid ran in front. And if you're in Baja mode, you can actually use that in full speed. So it's pretty cool to see that in your front camera. Yeah, and then your gauge cluster, the one that's all digital, we can also have our off-road settings there too. So if you're wheeling, going slow, crawling, whatever, you can see all your angles your, and stuff. Your Raptor status, which is what they had in the previous one. It's a cool name. Raptor status, yes. And this one actually has radar cruise and lane keep, which is super convenient if you want to just daily the truck and drive it normally. And it's lane centering? 
Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. It's like definitely solid Ford stuff. Good job, Ford. And then seat comfort. You happy in these seats, Jacob? Quite happy, but I did notice myself being propped up a little bit in my butt section for some reason. They're kind of firm seats, but I do like that they say Raptor on it. And they are Recaro's and they are bolstered. They're very nice material. They are very comfortable though. And then back seat room is huge. So much room. This only comes in Super Crew. Yes, no more Super Cab. And then if we lift up the back seats, we got the same kind of storage that pretty much every new F-150 has. But then what's different from this F-150 to normal F-150s, starting from the outside, the headlights. Yeah, so there's no actual bottom part to the DRLs like there are on the regular F-150s. Yeah, which makes it look kind of cool and different. And these are all amber. And then we've got the three marker lights and then we got the three marker lights on the back and then the marker lights on the side because it's very wide. Yeah, and they're like 3D. I really like what they did with them. And then the grill does say Ford on it. I talked to one of the designers, Tom, he said this grill is slightly different shape so that you can't just like plug and play it onto other non-Raptors. But I did do a render earlier of what the grill would look like if it was all Ford all the way across. So now I'm going to render that into the actual video. And moving around to the side, you can see the graphics everywhere. It looks okay, not the best. Again, that 37 is like just kind of weird. And then this paint color, it's a burgundy red. You know me, I'm sick of burgundy cars. Yes, it definitely should be in code orange. But you can really get it to pop when the sun is right. It is a very good looking color. And if we look at the back, the tailgate applique is in black like it was in the previous gen. And I believe you can actually delete it as well. And then we've also got the tailgate that's got all the features that the new F-150s have. We've got the step and everything. Very functional compared to older gens of Raptors which is probably the nicest part about this whole Raptor is that it's way better for everyday life than just a ridiculous jump truck you're driving on the roads. Yes, there's so many features in this that the previous ones didn't have or the features are even better now. Yeah, but like the F-150 kind of just stepped everything up so high this last year, right? It, it really did, but like the suspension, like it, this separates it the most from the other F-150s. Like this is so comfortable. And then to end off the looks, we've got dual exhaust at the back, but overall looks wise, do you like this more than the new Tundra TRD Pro in orange? Looks wise, I'm, I don't know, man. Like, if this was in code orange, I really think my mind would have changed. But like, seeing that Tundra, I'm just gonna have to go Tundra looks wise right now. I think Tundra looks better than this. This looks better than the Mojave. And then T-Rexes just look bigger and meaner. I've seen a bunch on the road recently, and I think those look better than this as well. Yeah, they're just kind of rounded, but the Raptor R is gonna look really good, so I don't know. But does this beat last gen Raptor looks? The last one is very clean. I think this one is more aggressive looking. I almost think the last gen looks better. Like, uh, like better. But then first gen looks best. Yeah, but this is like really cool because it's it looks more aggressive than the second gen. This is a perfect Raptor for this gen. Yes. <laughs> and what are we gonna end this video off with, Jacob? The very important truckster stuff that everybody's been waiting for, the payload and the towing capacity and the dart capacity. Dart capacity is fantastic, throw your darts anywhere, so many little cubbies in here. And payload, it's now 1,400 pounds and the towing is now 8,200 pounds, so an increase from the previous generation. And the exhaust sound is also different from the previous generation. <laughs> So with all that out of the way, I think it's time we get to the price. This one starts at $86,349. Canadian. And this one is optioned out to a whopping $111,434, which is approximately $7,000 shy of the TRX that we drove. So then we assume the Raptor R is gonna cost even more than the TRX. We, we kind of have to. But either way, this truck is pretty awesome. And if you wanna get your own, click the True Car link in the description below and uh, subscribe, leave a comment and like. And watch our comparison video. And our old Raptor comparison videos. And Shelby. <laughs>